Let's introduce the Lorenz curve and the Gini index. This is an application of the area to economics that has the advantage of not needing any real background in economics to understand. The Lorenz curve is intended to answer questions like the following. How much of a country's wealth does the poorest one percent of its citizens own? And the kind of naive answer, or I guess I should say naive guess, would be that the poorest 1% of a country's citizens might be expected to control about 1% of the country tree's wealth. However, that is rarely, in fact, I will go so far as to say never, true in practice. What happens in practice is that the wealth of a nation is concentrated among its elite. So the poorest 1% control much less wealth than you might expect, while the richest 1% control much more of the wealth than you might expect. Let's define a country's Lorenz curve. It's a function L of X whose domain is the interval from zero to one. And L of X gives the proportion of a country's wealth controlled by the poorest proportion X of the population. So in America, as of about a decade ago, L of 0.99 was about 0.67. And what this means is that the, um, I, this is country specific. I can't remember if I said this out loud, but we're talking about the United States here. And what this says 
is that the poorest 99% of Americans control about 67% of America's wealth. And as a corollary of that, the richest 1% control about 33%. And we are going to use the Lorenz curve to define something called the Gini index. So the Lorenz curve for any country has a domain from zero to one and a range from zero to one. And the line y equals x represents income equality. Depending on your personal politics, this is perhaps what you would like to see. And a country's actual Lorenz curve is somewhere below that line. And again, assuming that this is your goal, this area is a measurement of how far you are from that goal, how the actual wealth distribution of the country varies from your ideal. the Gini index is not quite the area between these curves, but it's closely related. Um, the thing about letting the Gini index be the area between these curves is that then the Gini index would run between zero and 0.5. And that might not seem like the end of the world, but economists decided that they would prefer to have a measurement that goes from zero to one. So they define the Gini index to be a fraction. This region, the region between these curves, always has an area between 0 and 0.5. How do I know that? Well, it's stuck inside this triangle, and this triangle has an area of 0.5. So this smaller region 
can't have a larger area than that. And we'll define the Gini index to be the fraction of this triangle. that the region between y equals x, this line, and L of x, this curve, Pies. So we've called this area, well, we've said that this region has an area of A, and we've made the observation that the total area of this triangle is one half. So that the Gini index isn't quite the area between the curves, but it's certainly very closely related. It's twice the area between the curves. And the area between these curves is the integral from zero to one of x minus the Lorenz curve. And we don't have much more to say about this. It is not an business and economics class, but here's an example of how a seemingly maybe kind of abstract concept, the area between curves, who cares about that? Well, it appears in a very fundamental definition of business and economics.